Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at Spurs versus Liverpool in the Premier League with, of course, SofaScore. Check out their app, link in the description below. Anyway, let's dive in. Postponements in their game against Leicester City and against Brighton and against Stad Stad Ron in the Conference League. Massive game against Liverpool. Spurs won a little bit of form. Uh, only played 14 games in the Premier League, so got a three uh, games on Arsenal. If they win all those three games, they would go above the Gunners. Um, if they win two of those, they'll go above them as well. So Spurs really are in contention for this top four uh, place. I think from a tactical perspective, obviously they've got problems. Son's out, Skip's out, Lucas Moore is out, Brian Hill is out. Uh, Emerson is out. So there's a few concerns for Spurs. So getting to their getting their squad uh, to face Liverpool uh, in terms of how we, we expect it to be lined up. Uh, I reckon they might go for a 3-4-1-2. I think the big thing with this Spurs team without the likes of uh, Human Son and Lucas uh, Mora, I think we might see a slight difference in their strategy and formation. Uh, Bergvine, when Conte spoke about him, has spoken about him, him actually being Harry play, Harry. Kane's replacement as a centre forward says he likes his ability to hold up the ball and play with with his back to goal. So we might in fact see Kane and Bergvine as two strikers uh, with Giovanni Lo Celso in behind. Giovanni Lo Celso played this role for Bet Real Betis and played it really well. Aggressive, horrible to play against. One of the big things of Liverpool this season, of course, uh, as previous years, is kind of pressing them out of the back. Uh, you know, picking up. The likes of Jordan Henderson, um, you know, forcing the likes of Trent and Andy Robertson into difficult situations by pressing those guys high, having two centre forwards in. But I think the new thing that you've got to do, obviously, we're talking about dealing with their their ball progressors, their ball players, their DM, their two fullbacks are always really important for Liverpool. But Thiago as well has started to drop into this, you know, um, left half position and get on the ball. Teams have actually done quite well in catching him out on the ball in the Champions League. Uh, Porto did it quite well. Um, and in the last game against Newcastle, St. Max and robbed, robbed Thiago high. So we could in fact see a bit of a more of a 3-5-2 shape from Tottenham uh, to kind of press the likes of Henderson, press Thiago out of the back and try and win that ball high in transition. We know that what's going to happen in defensive sense with... Um, Spurs as they will get back into this back five uh, and it will be all about Liverpool trying to break down. There was quite an interesting game in the recent few years I remember with Spurs defending with a back five. One of the big things that Jurgen Klopp did in that game was play Salah and Mane wide, ping the wing backs in the defensive sense, which meant, you know, you've got a lack of ability to, uh, you know, be involved in the attacking sense and you arguably have three centre backs up against one one forward, which causes an overload in midfield. The big thing with what Jurgen Klopp did in those games as well was have their one of the midfielders move into an advanced area, be it Jordan Henderson or someone like a Wayne Alden. So you're basically pinning that back four and you've got the overload in midfield. Basically would free up Trent Alexander-Arnold to, to get on the ball and play make. And we know how devastating he can be on the ball, but also from range, his goal against Newcastle United from that left-hand side was absolutely superb. And I feel that's going to be a bit of an element for for Liverpool. It's it's that free area. And I think Giovanni Lo Celso has got a big role to fulfil. He's got to not only shut down Jordan Henderson in possession, but has to shut out and close down Trent on the ball. We saw how United didn't get close to Trent Alexander-Arnold in their recent Premier League game, that 5-0 defeat. Trent ran the show. Um, and that's kind of the overload part of the pitch for Liverpool. This right wing with Trent, with um, Salah and with Oxlade-Chamberlain. Um, they could get an overload if, for example, Giovanni Lo Celso is sitting too high or not doing his defensive work. That could be a big, big problem um, for Spurs. Obviously, the big bit of space that you're going to get against Liverpool uh, in this shape and system will be uh, you know, in the areas behind the fullbacks. That is classic. That's classic. So if, if um, Spurs can win the ball in the transition and look direct to a Bergvine or look direct to a, Har to a Harry Kane, then Deli Alley can join the counter-attack. Could be a real method for Spurs to get at Liverpool. Then there's a few different parts of this game. You know, I think if Thiago takes control of the game and Spurs aren't quick to press him and quick to shut him down, that could be a massive, massive problem because we know Thiago's quality. Added a few goals to his game as well in recent weeks, but it is about the playmaking deep in midfield. If he can get on the ball, can start to control the tempo, you know, looking for the likes of Jota to feet, uh, switches out to Salah, into Robertson, into Mane, or even just those switches to Trent for Trent to play make. 
that's a bit of a problem. That's the new element of this Liverpool midfield. Thiago playing as a left half, almost that kind of Tony Cruz Real Madrid role for Liverpool Football Club. Um, so that's definitely a tactical thing that Spurs have to deal with. I expect them to play a 3-5-2 or a 3-4-1-2 uh, if they want to press high on Jordan Henderson in defensive midfield. Uh, let's move back to the stats and have a look at what the stats are saying for this game. Um, for Spurs this season, um, what's been disappointing for them has been the performances of Harry Kane uh, this season. Goals have been short and hard to come by. Harry Kane's only scored once in the Premier League so far this season. When you look at him last season, he was averaging 1.05 goal or assists per 90 in the league, which ranked him first in the competition. Um, you know, take a look at last season. Uh, most assists and most goals. 23 goals, 14 assists. A classic Kane season. Spurs should have cashed, cashed in. They really should have cashed in on Harry Kane. They were stupid to keep him. Uh, been massively demotivated this season. Uh, his data has humongously dropped down uh, this year, as we mentioned, a goal and an assist in 13 games. He's averaging 0.16 goals or assists per 90, ranking him 123rd in the league, um, which isn't great. Um, you're also looking at Human Son, you know, Human Son is arguably the most informed Spurs player will miss this game through COVID-19. Um, but this season has been the guy to make things happen. If he gets a goal or an assist this year, he would have outperformed Harry Kane in direct goal involvement in 2021 in the league. Human Son has been directly involved in 20, 12 goals and eight assists. Kane's been involved in 20 as well, 15 goals and five assists. Uh, so that is a massive, massive problem for Spurs if they can't get firing. Uh, for Liverpool in terms of their stats and how they're going to break them down, of course, Mohamed Salah is the best player in the world right now in the Premier League. 15 goals and nine assists in 17 games. That is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and you're looking at the in the league, he's been directly involved in 20, in 14. Uh, if he gets a goal or an assist in this game, uh, he has been absolutely superb. Um, when we look at his record since joining the Premier League in 17-18, or joining Liverpool, sorry, in 17-18, Salah's been directly involved in 151 goals. Next player is Jamie Vardy on 123 goals. So, so good this season. Uh, Mohamed Salah. Diogo Jota's added a bit of a threat as well, uh, providing that kind of slightly different goal-scoring element to Roberto Firmino. He had seven shots against Newcastle, scored once. He scored 13 goals in 2021 in the Premier League. Salah's the only Liverpool player to have managed more. Now talking Trent Alexander-Arnold, um, one of the only players in the league to create over 100 chances in the league in 2021. Uh, he's also scored four goals in this calendar year. Um, you know, prime Trent really prime Trent at the moment uh, 113 touches of the football three chances created 10 crosses 13 long balls uh, with six of them being completed it's got an absolute rocket against Newcastle I really feel that Trent is someone you've got to deal with as we mentioned um, that's why Giovanni Celso has got such a big role from a tactical perspective got to close down Jordan Henderson got to close down Trent and that decision making is going to be vitally important to see you know whether they win or lose and that'll be it. But Spurs, you know, over the history of them in the Premier League in the last few years, have been really good in the transition. We've not seen that enough lately. They've not been cutthroat in the transition, especially Harry Kane. And Harry Kane's had some great games against uh, Liverpool over the years. Uh, some really good performances. I think I remember one at Wembley where he absolutely shone, played off the line, completely opened them up um, from a transitional nature. Uh, his record is, is fairly good. Uh, against Liverpool, you know, considering how good Liverpool are. Uh, Harry Kane has been directly involved in eight goals in 13 games uh, against Liverpool Football Club um, in the 4-1 win. This is the one I was thinking about, but again, quite a long time ago. Um, two goals and an assist, but also if we look at the tactical side, it is a 3-5-2, a flat 3-5-2. Harry Winks in the middle um, with Eriksen and Deli Ali playing higher as pressers. That is the same structure. And Liverpool that day really struggled to break down Tottenham Hotspur. Obviously, a different different, different Liverpool. You know, we're talking Coutinho in midfield, Emery Chan in midfield. Those two players aren't even at the club. Dejan Lovren there. Uh, Albert uh, Moreno in there as well. So, it is a tough one. Tough one to call uh, for the game. I think, you know, you're looking at Spurs, you know, they've, they've had some time off. Some of the players will be rested, but will they be a little bit not sharp in there? I just think it's going to be an interesting one. Conte's obviously had the squad for a bit longer 
So there's an element of there. Um, you know, obviously this is the game that we kind of previously looked at. Harry Kane that day, two goals and an assist, seven shots on goal, one chance created. Absolutely superb performance from Harry Kane. And he's going to have to do that, drifting off the line, drifting into space, uh, similar to what he did in the Premier League game. Thanks for watching, guys. Get your score predictions in the comments below. Want to know goal scorers? Want to know how the game is going to be flowed? How is it going to be won? How is it going to be lost? And all that good stuff. I've been Stamman Dave. Subscribe if you're new. See you later.